A couple of years ago, we were at a bar, just minding our own business. So what I'm going to tell you happened during some traveling we were doing through Europe. So keep that in mind, as we were not always familiar with the area or the habits of the people and places we were visiting. Much of our travels through the US and Europe have always been rather, I don't know, off the cuff and a bit unscheduled, and this was nothing new. Sometimes it's fun to stand out a bit, and other times it's fun to blend in. But more than a few times while in Europe, Matt was taken for CIA, which, uh, yeah, did not always go down well. <laughs> so this one time, a guy comes up to us while we were in one of our let's stand out times. This guy was, you know, somewhat late middle aged, probably on business himself, seeing us from a nearby table, and he asked to sit with us. Of course we said, sure, why not? He even offered to buy another bottle of wine, so that settled it for us. No problem, take a seat. After the usual, where are you from? Oh, where are you from? Small talk. I don't know, I tend not to remember that small talk too much, and Matt, he especially despises the small talk concept. But this guy wasn't for too much small talk anyway, but he was curious. And we have come across a lot of curious people, so that was not too surprising. But let me tell you, there was a serious creepy vibe to this guy. Uh, whatever. We were here to have fun, drink a little, and tell some stories, and perhaps even hear a few. Most people love to talk when they have a few. Especially when they are a few years or decades older than you. I think it gives them a feeling of safety and security to tell you their story, or their point of view of their world. We've heard it many times and it always amuses me, so we encourage it too by asking all sorts of questions to get him to talk. Sometimes when we see someone like this, we like to play little games to get them to tell us all about themselves and compare it with what we can observe. We do love pulling a little Sherlock Holmes on them, if there's enough wine or time or both. If you've ever been meeting new people and drinking, you can identify with the fact that what seems like minutes are really hours. So it wasn't too long before one bottle was two and yeah, we were pretty relaxed. After a little while, I could see that Matt was changing his tone and eyeing me a little bit. And I could see what he meant already. This guy would talk a lot, but never exactly directly to me. At first I kind of ignored it, but then it was pretty clear. He either didn't like me, or he had some issues with women. After Matt asked him if he had a wife, it was pretty much cinched. He definitely did not like women. In general, it puts you off to deal with people like this, but we're the kind of people that, when we recognize something like this, we push just a bit more and want them to open up fully to their psychosis. <laughs> so Matt eggs him on asking him about work and injecting just a little bit about women to see if he takes the bait. I guess after enough wine, it's hard to rein in conscious control because he was like, screw them, and then after a little while it was worse, and then a little worse. Every few minutes we would look at each other and either roll our eyes or make other faces a little more on the worried side. This guy was clearly a bit off, maybe more than off. We were getting a little worried he was letting go a little too much, if you know what I mean. Not to mention, it was now way past midnight, and we had been egging this guy on the whole time, and it was pretty clear he was more than a little mental. But we were drinking a lot too, and not exactly using the best judgement. I guess the problem is that sometimes we don't know when to stop either, and this was one of those times. I mean really, people are crazy, yes, but not that crazy. But clearly we were wrong. It became increasingly clear he was crazy. He clearly hated women, I mean, barely acknowledging me was just one indication. But not knowing when to stop screwing around is, I don't know, part of our DNA or something. <laughs> Based on Matt's questions, I could see that he was trying to make this guy's head explode. He went a bit overboard and this guy just went on and on. But soon we finally realized that yeah, we should, we should live. The last straw was when he suggested to Matt that if he had any problems with me, that he should deal with them sooner rather than later. And we looked at each other and thought, now it was time to live and make sure he did not follow. The next day, we go to one of the coffee shops and see the news. And this weirdo we were having wine with was dead. Some bus accident from the night before and his wife? was just found, murdered, in their hotel room.
So yeah, this was just another aspect of my life that I wanted to share with you guys. I like my main DIY channel. This is more for a connection between you guys and to tell these stories. And some of them are a little weird. And that's why I think Patreon fits really well into that. So don't forget to check the description for more information. And thanks for listening.